The delay of Elden Ring is sad for most of us, but such events are common in our current time due to restrictions in the work environment. We always hope for the best outcome of the decisions taken by our favorite developers, as they have given us unforgettable experiences and new journeys to take on. There's lots of support for Elden Ring, and majority of fans have a positive take on this delay, like myself. But this gives us more time to speculate and talk about things we are excited for, and even relive our past experiences once again. I've been thinking on some gameplay mechanics that I would like to see make a return in either the same fashion or slightly enhanced based on previous FromSoft titles. So without further ado, I present 5 hopes I have for Elden Ring. Starting off with number 1, Weapon Transformations. With Elden Ring possibly having ways to assign skills to different weapons, I hope to see the return of Weapon Transformations as well. I'm not much of a PvP player myself, but I prefer Bloodborne's more than any other title because of the combos you can pull off with all of the weapons, such as the Threaded Cane, the Burial Blade, and finally the Moonlight Greatsword. Everything about these weapons were so unique and each one had a different skill required for efficient use. I think they would fit right at home in the new world we will be exploring. Perhaps we might not find the weapons that can be transformed right from the start, but it could be possible to infuse certain weapons to make a sort of hybrid that fulfills that role, but it's just speculation. Now onto the second one and probably most controversial, a more in-depth ADP stat. Now, I know a lot of people dislike Dark Souls 2, but hear me out. Being able to increase your agility on rolls and create iframes was one thing, but just imagine for a moment how much farther you could take that idea. ADP could be more focused on the agility of your character, how he or she moves based off armor, weapon arts, and weight. Examining the movement from the Elden Ring League gameplay footage recently, I'm not going to put it on here, but it's all over YouTube, we saw in that build of the game, it was very similar to Dark Souls 3. So we can assume the running and rolling is pretty much identical, at least for a low-level character. Where I'm going with this is the return of the ADP stat will greatly influence your dodging, combat style, and movement as you level it up. I'll give some examples. Starting off with the strength build, you know how heavy your character is and have to sacrifice defense in order to play as quick as possible, unless you plan on increasing that poise. Well, let's say that through the help of vitality and ADP, you could have the best of both worlds with dodging and combat, but in a more fluid way than how Dark Souls 2 did it. So instead of attacking and dodging like this, we would probably end up with something similar like this. It seems over exaggerated, but all of this would probably depend on your playstyle, whether you prefer to be a one shot deprived class to a tanky Havel Knight. ADP could also heavily influence blocking and deflecting with weapons. I wouldn't say it's going to be as good as Sekido's deflex system, but maybe the agility increase will make it feel like it. Also depending on what weapon you use, will determine what attacks you can parry or deflect. There's a lot of in-depth for this stat, but leveling it up would enhance your character's physical strength to help get smoother jumping and better stealth, assuming there's not a skill tree for it already. That last one was a really long in-depth view, but we're gonna go ahead and move on to number three. Combat Arch Tree with Carol Rooms. This next one is referring back to the swapping weapon arts, but now with the idea of Carol Runes added into the mix. If anyone isn't familiar with Carol Runes from Bloodborne, it is basically the replacement of rings for that game. They can add HP, stamina, damage reduction, etc. Lore-wise, 
Carol runes are a way of etching knowledge into one's memory, so perhaps one way we'll be able to swap through abilities on certain weapons will be like this. Let's take the Sekiro combat tree system, where you use skill points to get certain abilities or unique fighting techniques. The game granted you one page of these arcs in the beginning as a form of basic techniques, but later on through doing side quests and exploring, you unlock different types of arts. If certain NPCs in Elden Ring will be important as far as affecting the ending of it, this could work similar to how we got some arts from Ishin Ashina by doing his assigned quest. Combining the idea of both combat arts and Carol runes will essentially be the way we can fuse them to a single weapon when we are at the crafting table or blacksmith. I can easily see a menu in the workshop dedicated to these two things working as one. We could even take it as far as being able to equip weapon arts based on your ADP level. We are now at the fourth chapter, an upgradable mount. This one isn't as long as the other ones, but I thought it was a really neat idea. So obviously we won't be alone in the lands between. From friendly phantoms to hostile NPCs, there's a lot of traveling to be done. Our friend will probably need some help along the way. Now, it isn't specified that our mount will be able to take damage or is limited in movement to a certain extent, but there might be restrictions at the beginning of the game as far as where you can go and how you can move. For example, in the trailer, there was a brief scene where the mount was ascending up a steep cliff. That might be an ability that's only obtainable, perhaps from a boss or maybe a collectible item. Kind of like how you got a puppeteer ninjutsu in Sekiro after defeating the folding screen monkeys and had to use it on a monkey to get the dry serpent viscera for one of the endings of the game. It's all speculation, but there could be a similar skill tree system for it, which I'm all for it. We have made it to the fifth and final thing I would like to see in Elden Ring, Power Stance Dual Wielding. If you're anything like me who play Souls games not using a shield, then this one's definitely for you. One of the best things that Dark Souls 2 did in my opinion is being able to dual wield weapons and get another set of moves based on the type of weapon you're using. It would require certain stats to power stand certain weapons and possibly add more weight, again mentioning ADP. Agility would help you achieve your preferred combat style. From great swords, axes, katanas, to even the forgotten twin blade, this adds tremendous amounts of replayability, since you'd like to know which weapons handle better, do more damage, or simply just look more badass. Although the downside of power stancing is increased stamina consumptions, if they're going to be more lenient on it, how Vati mentioned, it probably acting like Bloodborne stamina meter, I wouldn't see the negatives of taking a secondary weapon than using a shield. There's many more things that I hope for, but they're more personal nitpicks, but I felt like these five were the best to mention for the general souls enjoyer to think upon. But let me know what you thought. Anything else you're excited for, or maybe you disagree with one of my points, or you totally agree? I mean, uh, it'd be nice to hear both sides. This is my first in-depth souls type video. I've always wanted to make one and had a couple scripts typed out in the past, but wasn't really satisfied with the ideas I came up with. But it was a lot of fun talking about these topics and thinking back on where we've been. I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video that I linked the mods I used for the making of this video and music down below if you're interested in checking them out. Also before I go, I took a long break from YouTube with my last video being about Doom Eternal DLC AI from like March of this year of 2021 and I deleted a lot of scrap videos from my channel. But that Doom video that I made hit over 4,000 views and I'm amazed it did that well. So if you're one of the viewers that watched it, thank you so much. I appreciate all the feedback. That was amazing. I hope to keep making content like this very soon. So thank you all for watching. I will see you in the next topic. Take care, everyone.